we have a special guest to introduce. He's my president, so I'm, I'm very fortunate to introduce uh, my president, president of the Atlantic Treaty Association, because Slovak Athletic Commission is a part of that organization. And Karl Lamas, he's the president already for two years or three years. He's becoming the president of ATA. But he's got many more functions than that. Uh, besides, first of all, I'm very glad that we have here a leading uh, uh, German politician, a leading uh, Christian Democrat here, but also a president of NATO Parliamentary Assembly, somebody who chairs over the parliamentary dimension of NATO. And I'm very fortunate and grateful to Karl Lammers that uh, he was willing and able to come. And without any more delays and more introductions, I give floor to you uh, to open uh, the space for next coming discussion. Please, floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I try to speak in Slovak language. <coughs> Thank you. Vaše nedami, vaše ni pani. Sa pozvanje na tuto visoko postavenu konferenciju serdečnje djakujem. Velmi mateši. I will translate later. Velmi mateši, že mošem bitu v Bratislava. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, no mistake. I would like to um, thank you very much for inviting me to this high-level conference. Yesterday in the morning, I was in Athens to make a speech on the NATO parliamentary assembly. In the evening yesterday, I was in Germany in my constituency because of a very big event. And after a sweet three hours sleep, I started to come here for my respect for that what you are doing and organizing here with the GlobeSec conference. The GlobeSec conference was established in 2005. Only six years later, it is an integral part of the major European conferences in the field of security policy. This year, more than 550 politicians, think tanks, and academics from over 40 countries meet here in Bratislava to discuss the most urgent questions of international security. Many thanks, and I think I speak also on behalf of our Secretary General, Charles Froehling, who is participating here and present, and um, for organizing this great event and being, Mr. President, such a gracious host. The Slovak Atlantic Commission in cooperation with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Slovak Republic, the NATO Public Diplomacy Division, the representation of the European Commission in Slovakia and Mikuláš Zurinda, your Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Slovak Republic, under whose auspices the conference is held. As president of the Atlantic Treaty Association, I would especially like to say thank you to you, Ambassador Rastislav Kacza, president of the Slovak Atlantic Commission, with whom I work together very closely, closely in the framework of ATA, as well as Secretary General Robert Vash, and the whole Slovak Atlantic Commission for their convincing engagement and successful work for the values of the Atlantic community. Thank you very much for that. Since its establishment in 1993, the Slovak Atlantic Commission has made a huge contribution to the goals of the Atlantic Treaty Association. First, as an observer and associated member, and since the accession, of Slovakia to NATO as a fully fledged member. You promote our principles and values of the Euro Atlantic community, and we are very proud that the Slovak Atlantic Commission is one of our members. 
Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> we all share mutual trust, confidence, and common values. These are some of the characteristics of NATO, the Atlantic Treaty Association, and of all our Atlantic councils all over the world. The Atlantic Treaty Association is a non-governmental organization which acts as a network facilitator in the Euro-Atlantic region and beyond. ATA is the umbrella organization for 41 councils all over the world. Since its founding 1954, ATA has helped to draw together the leaders of today and of tomorrow. It has helped to develop the values of the North Atlantic Treaty, democracy, freedom, liberty, peace, security, and the rule of law. And it has helped to engage the successor generation in promoting the importance of the transatlantic relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, especially throughout these days and weeks, we should become aware of our common values and goals. In Northern Africa and the Middle East, hundreds of thousands of mainly young people go on the streets and demonstrate for a better life and perspective. They go on the streets to protest against their old regimes. These events evoke powerful emotions. And I'm sure that it touches all of us, looking to the people when they protest, protest against their regimes. We feel, we know, that the world in this region is changing. John F. Kennedy, my political idol when I was a young boy, has said it best to describe the current situation. He said, change is the law of life. And those who look to the past time and the present are certain to miss the future. I think this is the time to shape the future together, even in this part of the world. We do neither know nor can we predict how the revolutions will proceed or spread. We sincerely hope that the freedom and rights we all enjoy in our countries will take root in this region as well. It is my firm belief that democratic governance and freedom of opinion are rights which should be shared by people everywhere as it was our belief 20 years ago after the fall of the Iron Curtain and the collapse of the Soviet Union. 20 years ago, we stood ready when the countries in Central and Eastern Europe needed our support. So I think we should stand ready now when the people in Northern Africa and Middle East ask for our assistance. It is needless to say that we have to be careful and realistic about what we can do and what is appropriate for us to do. We should not force them into a specific direction, nor act as a guardian. Rather, we should pay attention to what they have to say. We have to listen to them, and we have to look what they expect for their own future. We should at least be ready to assist and support these countries on their way to democracy when they call us. We must not forget that these countries are closely linked to us and important for security and stability. Seven countries of the Mediterranean region, Algeria, Algeria, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Mauritania, Morocco, and Tunisia are part of NATO's Mediterranean dialogue. They are our partners. It is the overall aim of the Mediterranean dialogue to contribute to regional security and stability. We have to take this goal seriously. 
the Atlantic Treaty Association and your Atlantic Committee here in um, Bratislava, we all have the goal to promote democracy, to support the development of civil society, and to engage civil society groups which support peace, security, and broad democratic practices. We are able to play an important role in the struggle for democracy in the Mediterranean. With our experience, it is our task, I think, to think about how we can assist these forms of political dialogue, especially with the youth, for example, with students, assisting in judicial reforms, election training, establishing new parties are only some possibilities to support the people and a democratic change. In Athens two days ago, in the meeting with my parliamentarians from all NATO countries, I made a statement and I said, new strategic concept. Only last week, I met with NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen to talk with him about the future of the alliance after Lisbon. He called the last summit a historic summit, and I think he is right. In Lisbon, a whole range of documents were adopted which set the direction for the alliance for the next years. First of all, NATO agreed in a new strategic concept, the first since 1999. The alliance's commitment to the common defense was reaffirmed, Article 5. A turning point in the relations to Russia was marked. And NATO recognized that threats can come from many sources, and not all of them fit the traditional conceptions of what the Alliance defends against. This summit was an extraordinary, you may it call historic. The new strategic concept is, in my opinion, a clear, concise roadmap for the 21st century. But we should not forget that it is only a decision, it is only a paper, it is only a document. And what we have to do is to look, to see and to observe how NATO is turning the document and the nice words into reality. That is our task. As you all know, paper doesn't blush. We therefore have to think about how those pages of writing can be turned into action. And so we have a look how NATO is doing this. Winston Churchill may have said it best. He said, it is no use saying we are doing our best. You have got to succeed in doing what is necessary. In this spirit, let me now turn to some areas which need, in my opinion, special attention. NATO Russia. A vital issue that requires our attention is the relationship between NATO and Russia. There is simply no way to deny the fact that Russia is an important part of the security picture in the European region. European stability can only be ensured through close ties between Russia and the West. Therefore, we should build a pragmatic relationship where we cooperate with Russia when it is in our mutual interest, but never shy away from criticism 
when it is necessary. We should not avoid discussion of human rights, freedom of the press or democracy. I only have to think about the conviction of the Russian businessman Mikhail Khodorkovsky. It should be our aim to enhance cooperation with Russia and build a new foundation for this cooperation. It is my firm belief that we must have as much interaction with our Russian counterparts as possible. This is our opportunity to work on solutions to our common problems. This is our role, the role for ATA, the role for NATO parliamentarians, to play its part in building a constructive, pragmatic, and realistic relationship with Russia and the social and civil society. NATO-EU relations. You all know that these relations are not very good. We have many problems. And the base problem is the unsolved Cyprus problem. But I think in a time in which all countries have many problems with their budget. You know, or maybe you know I come from Germany. We have problems too in the budget. Maybe in Slovakia it's the same. And in some other countries you come from. And I think it is our aim to reduce the costs by working together, by cooperating, to bundle our efforts, our energy. And therefore I think we have to cooperate more closely than we did before in the last years. So that is a specific issue of the new strategic concept to make a new partnership between NATO and the EU. And I think that is very important to establish this in the next time. Please allow me to raise another issue on the table, that is cybersecurity. In today's volatile world, we had to learn that new threats can originate almost anywhere and still affect our security. The security of our information systems is an issue that receives special emphasis in the new strategic concept. Several events over the last few years have made the threat of electronic attacks on computer systems very real. I just want to bring in mind the attacks on Estonia in 2007, on Georgia in 2008, or only recently the warm Stuxnet in Iran. And I do not know if you know that the Pentagon, for example, is attacked three to six million times every day. Experts agree that cyber attacks have the potential to significantly damage or even destroy state and economic structures in our countries with a highly developed electronic infrastructure. An attack on the information systems of banking and financial institutions, for example, could be devastating. An attack on the information systems controlling power generation and distribution could darken entire cities. I believe that these assessments make it clear that parliaments and governments make, must play a, a bigger role than we did before and pay close attention to the issue of preventing and combating cyber attacks. And it is also an important issue for the Alliance to address because an attack on an information system of one NATO member country could have cascading effects on many others. So we need to coordinate defenses against cyber attacks, share information, and develop contingency strategies. And to set here a clear signal, I visited last week when I was in Brussels the NATO Communication Information Systems Services Agency in Mons. This deals with potential attacks on NATO information networks. And in four weeks, I will go to Tallinn. In Tallinn, there is a special institution of NATO, the so-called Cooperative Cyber Defense 
center of excellence. And I think it is very important to have this in mind and to focus on those potential attacks we see maybe in the future. Next point, human rights. The Atlantic Alliance is based on common values. It is our adherence to democratic institutions and our defense of human freedoms that makes our societies and this alliance so strong. That is what holds us together. The freedom of speech and the freedom to organize for peaceful political change is a core value of all democracies. The freedom of expression of the media and of individuals is another core value. The freedom of belief and the ability of citizens to follow their conscience are also fundamental. We call the basic freedoms human rights. That are not European rights. That are not American rights. That are rights, rather, they apply to all people. It are human rights. I do not have any illusion that this alliance, that our alliance, can or should force other countries that fail to recognize human rights to suddenly adopt our values. But that does not mean we should pretend that there is not a problem in many countries around the globe. We should use every opportunity to influence those countries that do not respect human rights to release political prisoners to allow freedom of expression and allow freedom of conscience in an adequate way without jeopardizing the cooperation we, we require with those countries. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many more issues, many more key priorities. Thinking of Afghanistan, that we have to develop a common strategy, maybe in some years to 14 to leave this country, and before train the Afghan police and the Afghan soldiers to take over responsibility for their own. But I think the most important thing is to explain also to the citizens in our countries why we are in Afghanistan. To prevent terrorists to export terror from Afghanistan again to our countries. That is the most important issue we have and we have to explain it better than we did before. I could speak about missile defense. I will not do. But I will make my last point with that what I feel as parliamentarian and as president of ATA is so important. We have to communicate better than we did before NATO's role. Please believe me, I'm sometimes in schools and sometimes in, un in universities. Just uh, two months ago, I was invited by students in the Heidelberg University. That was a tough discussion for two hours. We spoke about NATO and I asked them, what is NATO? They are very clever students. And they say NATO is war, NATO is Afghanistan, and NATO is United States. That was the answer of clever students. And I say no, NATO is far more, and not that what they said. NATO provides assistance after natural disasters. Nobody knows? It transports relief supplies to Africa, and it helps to build civil societies and much more. And so, Mr. President, Katja and you all, I think it is um, very important to speak about NATO, to speak about what NATO is, what NATO does, that NATO made a great contribution to stability, to peace and freedom in Europe. And in the 60 years NATO is existing, it made, uh, it made a large contribution to peace in many regions of the world. And if we do so, and if we speak especially with the young generation, if we are able to reach their hearts and minds, I think we have a good chance to uh, lead NATO especially to the future. And so let me close with a vision. An Austrian poet said, those who want to create the future need dreams and visions. The vision of a world in freedom, in peace, and security, this is the vision of ATA. This is the vision of NATO. This is the vision of our NATO parliament. This is the vision, I think, of us all. 
In our world today, security and stability are not a natural state of affairs. We need to work hard to achieve and to maintain them. More than ever, this requires organized international cooperation, and it requires strong and robust institutions. All those challenges being on the agenda on NATO can be answered in the best way possible if we work together closely. I wish you, Mr. President, and all who participate in this great Globsec conference the best fruitful discussions. And if you go home, maybe on Friday, you should that that was a great conference and I got a lot of experience. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all. And let me just invite uh, Ed Lucas and his panel to take the seat and then continue uh, with the discussion. I'll take Mr. President to the hands of journalists who wants to ask some questions, please.